I think that we have everybody. I guess we can get started. So I will call this meeting to order. Uh, moment of silence, please. Okay, we'll do the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty for all. Amen. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Caliguire? Here. Ms. Dormo? Here. Mr. Dovey? Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Mr. Phil Jenkins? Here. Uh, Mrs. Karen Manoogian? Here. Mr. Litwack? Uh, Mr. McLaughlin? Here. And Mrs. Tersich Keeley? Here. Thank you. Um, can we please have the reading of statement of adequate notice, please? Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January 14th, 2021. Posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on April 1st, 21. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on April 1st, 21. Filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on April 1st, 21. And posting the notice electronically on the district website www.delanco.com on April 1st, 21. Thank you. Um, can I please have the approval of minutes of the March 10th, 2021 regular and executive meetings and the March 17th, 2021 special and executive meetings exhibit B, please? This is Phil. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Phil. Have a second. Uh, Bob is raising his hand. Okay, questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. Um, let's see, can we please uh, have a motion to accept the reports of secretary and treasurer for February, 2021, which are in agreement? Phil, I'll make a motion. Um, Phil, and I saw Bob raise his hand as well. Bob, um, questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Darmo abstains. Okay, thank you. Um, motion carries. Okay, we're going to do the community liaison reports and I'm going to start off with Riverside for Cameron since he's not present this evening and I will read what he has written. Students are all remote for this week as many other districts have done after spring break. As of last month, there are 90 plus students and six plus staff under quarantine. Um, his sister Allie Jenkins was approved as the volunteer softball coach. Delanco graduate Sophie Nusafor was student of the month recipient. Sports night is officially underway in some capacity. Riverside's budget was approved for submitted without issue. They are still um, conducting the superintendent search. It's still underway. They can't say more than that, that information there. And he is absent tonight as they are currently interviewing for more candidates and they are hoping to have a person selected by mid-May. Thank you, that concludes that liaison report. Anybody from Delanco PTO? Okay, so I don't see anybody um, putting their hand up, but uh, we will move on to DISA Recreation Township Committee. Is there anyone from either of those? This is Fern Olette from Township. Hello, Fern. Hi, good evening. Uh, we introduced our budget this past Monday evening, and it looks like the increase for this coming year for the township will be, be about $26. Uh, also, this coming Monday at our township meeting, we will be uh, discussing the uh, cannabis and uh, the public is invited to come in and 
or come online and uh, express their comments. Uh, we have until uh, the beginning of August to make a determination on what we want to do here in uh, the township pertaining to cannabis. And that's all I have to report at the moment. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Catherine, did you want to say anything? Um, yeah, I can update what you're talking about for the township liaison report. Uh, you, know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll wait until that. Yeah, that's fine. I can wait until. No problem. Thank you. Okay, so we'll we'll move right move right along to the visitors and uh, the president's message. And I'm just going to say hello and welcome everyone to tonight's uh, school board meeting. I appreciate everyone's attendance, and we hope to have it have this evening's meeting go smoothly and quickly. With that intent in mind, I will move this along, and I will pass the virtual microphone to Mr. Our Superintendent, Mr. Mersinger, who will speak more about our students of the month, Mr. Mersinger. All right, thank you, Mrs. Karmanugi, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, it's definitely great to see so many families on tonight and so many students on tonight to be recognized. So uh, I really appreciate that. Now, typically, if we did Students of the Month and we'd have an in-person acknowledgement of the students where the student would receive a certificate from their school principal, but we haven't been having in-person board meetings. At some point in the future, we will get to that, but uh, we're not at that stage right now. So no matter what, uh, we still wanted to honor students, though, who have been doing a fantastic job in different areas. Before I talk about the students, as I've done for a few months, I do want to take a moment to thank everyone involved that surrounds these students with positivity and assistance and everything they need throughout the day and the week and all the things that have been happening. So we've had the COVID-19 situation impacting us <clears throat> for well over a year now. And uh, I appreciate the families, the parents, aunts and uncles, you name it, grandparents that have been surrounding these students with assistance uh, due to what, what's been happening with our program being fully virtual, being hybrid, having to go back to fully virtual at times. So I really appreciate that flexibility and the efforts from the families. I also want to thank our staff who, who are doing a marvelous job. Uh, also, riding the wave of the COVID-19 situation when it comes to the many different challenges that our staff members are facing. So I thank you very much, uh, teachers, instructional aides, secretaries, nurses, members of our facilities team, administrators, food service, you name it. Everyone is really coming together and making a fantastic effort to help during this very challenging situation. So I appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, please keep up the great work. I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, so so that all that before student recognition, because it's staff members that actually put in the names for students that are going to be recognized and, and, and they're nominated and then the um, principals also are a part of that process too. So thank you for everyone for being involved. So now let's move on to the students. So uh, without further ado, we'll start with Walnut Street Middle School. And at Walnut, what they do is they have different attributes that students have and they recognize them for those particular attributes such as writing, math, and so on. So for this month, uh, the writer of the month is Danielle Cleland. Congratulations to Danielle. Well done. We have two fantastic mathematicians for the month at Walnut and those are Lily Ann Booth and Logan Felmy. All right, congratulations. We have an artist that's being recognized this month, and I see him on my screen up there. That is Orion Marinella. Congratulations, Orion. I see you there. Well done. Next, we have the student that is showing the greatest perseverance at Walnut. As you know, like I said, I just mentioned all the different challenges. We have two students being recognized for that, and they are Giovanna Lucidi and Hannah Tusillo. Congratulations to those two students. We also have a Walnut Whiz kid that's being recognized. And that's a student that has, that's very well-rounded and is doing many great things in different areas. And that student is Yanni Sejas. Congratulations to Yanni. Next, uh, we have an advisory all-star. The advisory period is a period at the beginning of the day where students are interacting and doing things related to social and emotional learning. And so the advisory all-star is Shay Smyers. Congratulations to Shay. Next, uh, moving on to science. 
our, our stupendous scientist for the month at Walnut is Sarah Taylor. Congratulations to Sarah. And also uh, we have an athlete, actually two athletes being recognized at Walnut and they are Isabella Marcus and Jeremiah Matos. Congratulations, Isabella and Jeremiah. Uh, next, we have our dedicated students. Two students were selected this month for showing great dedication to their schoolwork and to their fellow students and dedication in so many areas. They are Elena Spence and Chase Lilliston. Congratulations to Elena and Chase. Awesome work. Um, also, we have perfect participation. And this one is always so surprising to me because we're in, we're in an era now where a lot of the classes are having Zoom meetings like this, or even if they're in person at times, perfect participation. That's amazing. Uh, so those students are Aiden Spain, Emiliano Sosa, and Kylie Schroeder. Congratulations to those three students for perfect participation. So that concludes the uh, recognition for Walnut. Congratulations to all those students. And now we're gonna move on to Pearson. And so for Pearson, they're not necessarily specific attributes we're looking at. It's more uh, just students that are doing a fantastic job during the current virtual and hybrid learning environments that, that we're implementing. So in kindergarten for Mrs. Arangio, we have Carter Corridan. Congratulations, Carter. Congratulations, Carter. All right. <laughs> Next, uh, we have for kindergarten again, Mrs. Crozier's class. That's Ali Vicencio. Congratulations, Ali. Uh, moving on to first grade, Ms. Smith's class, the student being recognized is Ryan Wright. Congratulations to Ryan. Also in first grade, Mrs. Weller's class, the student being recognized is Aubrey Marcus. Congratulations, Aubrey. Uh, moving on to second grade, we have Ms. Lipinski's class. The student being recognized is Sophia Cunha. Congratulations, Sophia. And now on to Mrs. McCann's class. The student recognized for this month is Madeline Sellert. Congratulations to Madeline. Uh, we're moving on to third grade now, and uh, we have Mrs. Barbara and Mr. Castelli's class, and the student is Mariah Parnell. Congratulations, Mariah. Next, uh, third grade, Mrs. Fitzwater's class. The student being recognized is Piper Bailey. Well done, Piper, congratulations. Moving on to fourth grade, Mr. Stockton's class. The student recognized for this month is Adriana Estelo. Congratulations, Adriana. Uh, Mrs. Wallace's fourth grade class. We now have uh, the student being recognized is Maria Pedon. Congratulations to Maria. Moving on to fifth grade, we have Mrs. Brendel and Ms. Letton's class. The student is Jocelyn Winfield. Congratulations to Jocelyn. And last but certainly not least, we do have Mrs. Guckin's fifth grade class being recognized as our student of the month, and that is Xander Shugart. Congratulations to Xander. So those are our students of the month for Pearson, as well as our students being recognized at Walnut. And uh, that concludes this report, Mrs. Cameron Ugin. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate it. Do we have any public on a public comment on agenda items? Okay, I don't see anybody with their hands up, so I will close that now and we will move forward with the superintendent's report. You know, if, if I may, could I, could I interject? Um, it, I would like to call an executive session um, because I have some questions about the, the status of our budget. Uh, I'm not on the, the uh, finance committee, budget and finance committee, and I just would like to get some clarification. Um, and a few of the things so I want to talk about. Hey, Stephen, how about when we get to the finance committee report and when I have questions or comments, we can say that if there's something specific that you're um, mm -hmm. questioning, we can table it and then discuss it in an executive. I mean, I would love to get this conversation rolling earlier in the meeting rather than at the very end when we're kind of tired out, if that makes sense, because I have some personnel questions. And, well, um, we, so we're. 
So I'm, so I'm making a I mean, I'm making a motion to go into executive session. If anyone is willing to second. I second the motion, Vera Dharma. Um, and I would and I'll, I. Uh, and is, is, this a, is this to this is to discuss financial and personnel? Yes, I, I mean I just need some clarification because I'm not on the committee, um, and so I have questions about personnel issues, uh, and, 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 and questions and that, the, questions that include the the uh, chief school administrator as well. So I was hoping we could. Should we wait until we get closer to those areas because we haven't even touched on those yet, and we're not voting on? We're just going to be voting on the superintendent's report next. Right. I would love to get this conversation started before the end of the meeting, um, because everyone's so tired out. But you know, after we've gone through all these reports, is this too so much of a? I'm not sure how other board members feel if this is too much of a disruption to the, the usual. So we have the superintendent report, instruction program. superintendent's report, and then the instruction committee program committee. Those are relatively quick things to get through, and then once we get to the finance committee report, we certainly can revisit this. But if we um, do this now, we're going to end up delaying the entire meeting. So we can, what we can do is discuss these things in executive session after the normal agenda, um, because there's areas where it states, you know, do we want to go into executive session if necessary? That's normal. Right, but I would, I would love to it. go into executive session earlier. We can go right well, before I, the finance committee report if that's, <clears throat> if that's acceptable to everyone. Uh, after the instruction and program committee report. We have a, there is a, a normal procedure that we're following, Steve, that for some reason you don't feel um, answers your questions, but you're interrupting the flow of the meeting by doing it this way. And we, we have executive session, and at that point, those things can be brought up. There's nothing that's being done underhanded. It's all just the flow. For some reason, I'm not doing it. You want information? Yeah, I, I would prefer to get through the meeting, the agenda, yeah. the primary agenda, and then we can go into executive session and discuss whatever is necessary at that point in time. Because unless it pertains to your ability to vote on certain things, specifically what is on this agenda, then we should wait. Okay, it, it's not directly related to voting on the. Uh, okay, the well then, so, we need, okay. Then, we need to, then we will meet, move forward, and then we can discuss in executive session. I think that's really the best practice. Okay, as a courtesy to viewers, that's that's acceptable. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mersinger, superintendent's report. Is right, there a motion you. on the floor? Wasn't there, I think there was a motion on the floor, so we have there, to There was a motion, it sounded like Stephen is rescinding his motion. He's retracting his motion. Okay, is that, I do is appreciate that, in fact, that. I mean, that- Okay, I just wanted to Stephen, clarify, because that's no, where we were- I appreciate that, Harry, thank you. Robert, Thank you. Thank it's, you. It's fine. It's fine. Cool. Thank you. I just I don't want to speak for Stephen. I just want to confirm that he is retracting oh, yeah. that motion. I was muted for a second. Sorry. Um, if That's it's such a big problem for people to, to have an executive session now, then fine. I'll rescind my motion. We can we can talk later. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I again, I appreciate your flexibility. All right. Thank you, Mr. Karamanugi. And so, superintendent's report. A motion is requested to approve the following items, letters A through F. Uh, I have no additional comments at this time. Motion is requested. Bob W says he will motion. Second. Phil. Yep. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cal, oh, excuse me, this is mine. Instruction and Program Committee, CSTBOE update, reclassifications and placements, confidential exhibit J. Uh, Mr. Litwack, Finance Committee report. Yes, the committee chairperson makes a motion to approve the following A. Uh, I can read them all off A through L, or we can approve them all. I don't mind L either way. A through L is fine. Um, if there's not any questions from anyone. Well, not yet. So you're making a motion for this, right, Harry? Motion. Requesting a motion. Yes, that's correct. 
So we're looking for a second. Mm -hmm. Bob has given his thumbs up as a second. Questions or comments? I do have one question. Are all of these budgeted for or are they unbudgeted? Uh, they are not budgeted. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have a question about the shared services agreement with Burlington County Special Services. Mm -hmm. Is that um, like a new agreement? Are we re reintroducing our agreement with them and just signing it for the new school year? And if we are resigning it. What has changed from previous years? I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice this on our committee meeting, or I would have asked there, but I just noticed. It. I believe it's just a, a new student that's going into one of their programs, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, there's Joe? There's two. No, there's one that's for a specific student, and there's one that's a general year agreement for shared so services. So it's item G, shared G services G for professional services. Yes. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, so yeah, I don't I don't mean to interrupt. I'm just saying it's the one related to ESU and we have a number of ESU team members that assist us with child study team and actually serve on our child study team as well as provide other services. So uh, what has changed, uh, I would say nothing has changed except for the fact that we we would have an annual agreement with them. That's that's this agreement. So we've historically had an annual agreement or this is a new thing. We've, we haven't historically had an annual agreement. It's, it was an agreement that started as of uh, the 2019-2020 school year. Okay, so we're renewing last year's agreement. We're not necessarily renewing the exact same agreement. It is, it is the agreement for 21-22. And the, the terms and conditions for this coming year, they may or may not be. Yes. Yeah, so year, different prices for services, that, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, what, is, is it possible to re remove this from the list and vote on it next month? Is that too much of an inconvenience? To, what is I that? Like to get some more information about it. I also need to research it a little more. Letter G. I would like it to is in your packet. It, it, it is in the board packet. Oh, and yeah. This is approved like for the current year and, and the month. year prior. What, it, what is it that you, you're requesting? I would like to vote on this the next month uh, because I'm not, I need to do more research about it. What kind of research are you going to do that is going to change? I want to agreement. make sure that financially this is our best deal and I need to, I need to look uh, at it. And Vera, look at that. Vera, I don't know I where you're going. I feel the same way. I don't think Vera's alone on this. I need she has a right time to for this wait item. Wait on it, Harry. You know, with that, do we? What I we mean, can do is, is we can go and you can abstain that? from the vote if, if you choose to do so to revisit it further at a different time. But if we don't vote on this item, then that in that will not be agreed upon, and, and that individual or whomever would be maybe affected adversely by this. Vera, are you aware that all contracts have terms and conditions, and one of the terms is always time? That's you know, and well, I, I asked you know, the question. I mean, my question was, would, would, would delaying this make a difference? So, that's, if anyone, if someone I, I, has an answer, you know, would, would it be would it cause an inconvenience to wait one more month to approve this because it's for next year? Yeah, it would because we have business, an ongoing business. It isn't a stop and go business. We have a fluid calendar. Well, but what we would happen? Fluid agreement. Payments, et cetera. So, Harry, one one moment, please, um, Mr. Mersinger. Yeah. If delaying this specific vote, would it impact adversely somebody who may be attending or needing that type of service? What, what it is, is our ability to fully prepare for the 21-22 school year because we currently employ their services through ESU. So I would love for the child study team to be able to plan and prepare for 21-22 without delay, meaning that if if the board wants to go in a different direction and not utilize ESU and suddenly change as of July 1st, which sounds like it may be something, some, you know, certain individuals are, are implying, if that's the case, uh, that so, uh, delaying it, uh, I'm not saying that delaying it would have an impact. I'm saying that not approving it would certainly have a, an enormous impact. Mm -hmm. so, so delaying it sounds like a pretty good option to me. I'm not sure how others feel. The contract I mean, I, I, is supposed to start in September. So 
the school year is starting or you're maybe August. So I think that we could delay one month. Vera, you're absolutely ridiculous in, in assuming that, that that businesses work on, oh, it's starting in September, so we'll do it in August. So it isn't how businesses operate. So why don't That's we cable G and we can meeting. discuss it in executive session so that everybody maybe has peace of mind? Or we could just vote on it. We could just vote on it. Well, it, it is. I, I asked for, is it, it's been seconded, hasn't it? No, we did not. We only did questions and for, comments. Oh, okay. oh, well, no, we did, okay. actually. Well, that is supposed to be seconded before the comments. You're correct. You're correct. This is an interruption of the flow. Right, this flow is just questions and comments. Well, well, technically, you're supposed to ask if anybody would like any letters removed before you right. go for a vote for a second. So, so that did, we're going, the whole process didn't happen. What we'll do, we will revisit letter G of the finance committee report in executive session. That way we can have people feel more confident about what they're voting on. I think that that's fair. We'll do that. In the meantime, we are looking to vote on letters A through L, excluding G to be revisited in executive session. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm I, my vote. I, I oppose. Thank you, Harry. Um, abstain. I'm splitting my vote. No, when you're no I know. I know. I just need to get through these three. Okay. Uh, abstain. Okay, Vera, please provide your letters. A through A, B, C, no. D, E, F, yes. A through L, I mean, uh, H through L, yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Um, Mr. Caliguire, Operations and Facilities Committee report, please. I can't. Oh, sorry. That's uh, Operations and Facilities uh, report, routine maintenance activities. Schools are in hybrid sessions due to the coronavirus. Trash removal at Walnut, completion of work orders as needed, and special project activities. Replaced the rooftop fan motor in room 11 at Pearson, changed all air filters in both schools. Uh, MERV 13 filters installed. Repaired unibent in room five at Pearson, replaced bearings, winterized all snow equipment. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Mrs. Darmo, policy committee report, please. Are you uh, muted? You may be muted. Sorry about that. It's okay. The committee chairperson makes a motion to enter on second reading and adopt the following policies and regulations from a stress estimate, Strauss estimate alert 221. Um, and they're listed there. What else do I need to say? Nothing. That's fine. Um, the motion, Ms. Stormo made the motion. Um, who will second that? I'll, I'll second, second it. it. Oh. That's Stephen, Catherine got you by like a hair. So I'm going to give it to Catherine. It's like Jeopardy. Um, got it real quick. Um, okay, questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Personnel committee report, that would be Cameron. He's not here, so I will read this for him. The committee chairperson makes a motion to approve the following line items, substitute list revisions, exhibit R, extend unpaid leave of absence under New Jersey Family Law Leave Act for Marie Brendel, grade five teacher beginning 4-19-21, ending 6-30-21. This item was previously approved at the 10-14-20 and 3-10-21 board meetings. C, extend paid leave for, of absence for disability associated with childbirth for Melissa Barbara. Pearson teacher beginning 322-21, ending 514-21, unpaid leave of absence under the New Jersey Family Leave Act, beginning 517-21, ending 630-21. This item was previously approved at the 12920 board meeting. And D, appointment of James Costelli to the position of long-term substitute for grade three at M. Joan Pearson Elementary School with a start date of 322-21 and an end date of 6-18-21 to be paid at the board approved rate for substitutes. Thank you. 
motion. So who will second that? Dharma seconds. Thank you, Vera. Questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Calguire. Oh, yes. Ms. Dharma. Yes. Mr. Dovey. Um, Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Karamanugian. Yes. Mr. Litwack. You're on mute. Mr. Litwack. Yes. Thumbs up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Keeley. Yes. Motion carries. Board liaison reports, Riverside, and I mistakenly read Cameron's during the community one. So we'll just move along and go to the NJSBA, BCBA, SBA, Mr. Litwack. <clears throat> okay. Harry, are you available to give your liaison? Can you My videos. Can you? Uh, yep, yep. I can hear you. I can see you. I can hear you. Okay. On the 20th of March, there was a direct meeting statewide and the school boards association increased their budget what by 1.9 percent for the coming year but there's no dues increases for the 12th consecutive year to any of the school systems they've been able to sustain themselves and make money from um, different activities that they do the proposed $578 million coming into the state, uh, additional funds, there were 25 million extra preschool capital um, maintenance was 75 million, stabilization 500 um, million for, uh, 50 million, I'm sorry, for stabilization. That's the numbers changing and how the, the number of uh, students and the uh, formulas that are applied the chapter 44, which was intended to lower costs, has worked not as it's worked in some districts, not as, to the degree that they had hoped it would, but it has lowered costs. Um, they're allowing school districts to maintain a 4% surplus, budget surplus. And March 24th, there was a conference that um, was through uh, Rutgers School of Labor Management and Bob Angelo. I know I, when I was doing apprenticeship grants, he was teaching there. He's the Secretary of Labor in New Jersey. Um, next year, the con conference convention is also going to be virtual in October. And once again, it'll be $900 for 25 people. Mm -hmm and there'll be more proposals, et cetera. Uh, I think we need to look at the, the, once again, it kept coming back up about the money, the forthcoming money and how that will be um, utilized throughout the state. And once again, the regionalization efforts are back on the table and moving forward. Um, the path to progress, which was the program that the state senator had put into play, uh, has sort of the dust has been off of that file now. And after a year and a half, two years, we'll uh, get that back in shape, which would mean by the year 2025 that schools would be getting the full funding according to the projections. And we'll obviously wait and see about that. And um, I guess there's things going on that I don't know if we've been affected by it yet. Excuse me for a moment. But it's parents are requesting 
certain things for their students. They may say, hey, my kid, I don't think he got a year's growth. I want him to repeat the same grade or you know, various things may be coming up that we should be aware of. And there's also, um, they're trying to, they're getting funding. We're aging out of special ed uh, children so that they can have one more year up until age 22. And then what was mentioned earlier, even in the town, it's the marijuana related to school, the 4% budget um, surplus and compassionate use. That's the other thing too, that may need to be addressed in schools is compassionate use of medical marijuana. And May 12th, 13th is, um, you know, or budget kind of stuff is, uh, is coming up. So that's about it. And until we see what we actually get from S2, if it is in fact 245,000, that would be great. That's on top of whatever our money is flowing through federally. So that's what I have to report. Thank you. Marissa, you're Thank you. Hello? Yeah, no, thank you, Harry. I appreciate it. Okay. All good. Um, this is Teresa Keeley, if you would please. Okay. Um, so this is the Township Committee Liaison Report. I did miss, I wasn't able, unable to attend their most recent budget workshop, uh, but I understand some of the committee members, um, board of ed committee members were there. Um, this is a summary of their meeting from Monday. Um, there wasn't that much that was discussed that pertained to us. Um, a couple of points. There's going to be a public hearing on the township budget on May 17th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Um, so I encourage board members to attend that. There'll be a public hearing on cannabis in Delanco on April 19th at 7 p.m. via Zoom, which I know Vern mentioned earlier. Um, I also linked to some information um, related to that decision, but that would be um, a major tax revenue source because the township can add an additional 2% tax um, to any business that comes into town. And then during the public session, there was an allusion to a purchase of additional properties around the Fisher building at 200 Ash Street, which the township purchased last year, I think it was. Um, there, the main conversation was held in executive session, but I'm just bringing it up because there could be a potential impact to tax revenue um, for the schools. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Okay, old business. Deadline for SEC filings is April 30th, 2021. Please submit as soon as possible. And new business. Do we have any new business? I don't think so. Uh, there's one thing that I would, I'd like to just bring up to check in on, uh, which was something that came up in our policy committee uh, meeting, uh, our last meeting. Um, and that's the, the issue of um, potentially moving to a a committee of the whole structure for this board. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, currently we have things siloed into committees, there's a budget and finance negotiating committee and so on. And so our thought was that it might make sense to move to a committee of the whole where we, instead we, instead of meeting once a month, we meet twice a month and we discuss everything uh, as, a, as a nine member board. So I, we can discuss it further if you want. I guess my question is, uh, if we wanna go forward with that, what does the timeline look like? Uh, you know, when could we potentially switch? You know, what does the process look like and, and when could we switch to a committee of the whole? I'd like to do that sooner rather than later. What if we don't want to switch as a committee of the whole, you know? Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that, that's why we should discuss it. But there was, I mean, in the policy committee meeting, it seemed like almost everyone in the in that committee was in favor of it, or at least in favor of discussing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but. Uh, go ahead, Harry. You're on mute. Oh, now you're coming off. I think maybe you, Steve. Oh, Harry, you're on mute. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, you, you muted yourself again. You have to like, just let it ride, like hit it and let it ride. Harry, you're muted again. So if you just 
click it once, it will unmute and then don't click it again. You can also hold the space bar down. That's a good tip. Uh, I think, Harry, you might have double clicked it. Well, we can't, Harry, we can't hear you at all. Like, unmute. Okay. There, unmute. There, okay, I'm you're unmuted good. now. You're good. The, um, can you hear me? Yes, that, yes. Um, that, Steve, I think you have to do the research. There's no, you're asking us for answers. You're the board member where the, the committee needs to do the research. It's not like there's some set pattern time or something like that. That's the board doing due diligence before acting. Sure. Yeah, my, my memory of it. Well, this is me just checking so, in on the topic. My memory. The question. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand what I was, you're getting at, but my question was for really for Marissa because where we left where we left the issue with the policy meeting was that I think Marissa, you said you would think about it or look into it, and I was just checking in to see. Yeah. The status. No, I, I I I remember the conversation absolutely, and I think that it's actually a good uh, conversation to have with the full board. I think that um, bearing that we have a lot of newer members, I think having everybody involved in the discussions related to all committees would be certainly helpful in um, enabling everyone to understand what's going on in all aspects. Um, I think that if we can have the majority vote for it, I think that it's something that would be beneficial. I think there perhaps would be less, um, maybe some less questions being asked because things would be discussed with the whole, unless there is a conflict, of course. Um, but we could always organize the meeting as such to leave those items at the end. So then that person or whomever could drop off prior to the discussion being had in regards to the um, area of conflict that they have. We can, we can work on that. We can absolutely, I, I think that that's something we should explore. I think that um, I would like to uh, talk to Mr. Mersinger a little bit more about it um perhaps after this meeting and we can decide um you know what it, let, let me ask the board let me pull the board because before we go any further if if everybody is in a disagreement or agreement that will kind of tell us where we stand with everything so where do we stand in regards to the committee of the whole versus separate committees held at different times of the month and this would be are, you, are we doing a straw poll yeah, yeah just I, a straw, I straw poll Yep, yeah, yep. It, it, it behooves us to do this because I don't know why I would have a conversation with mm -hmm. you if everybody's not in agreement. It would be like a pointless conversation to have. So, Phil, what is your thoughts? I'll start with you. Okay, my thoughts are as committee as a whole, we go to enough meetings now. We don't need any more meetings. We have the subcommittees and we listen to what they have to say. I'm not in favor of committee as a whole. Okay, thank you. Bob? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I haven't been able to hear him the whole night. I haven't been able to hear him the whole night. I have a comment or two. Yeah, no, I'm just yeah. going in order of my yeah, yeah, screen, sure. just so I don't miss anybody. So I'm going to skip Bob and we'll come back. Hopefully he'll be back in with sound. And Stephen, you are next. Sure, I think, I, mean, I think moving to a committee as a whole would be really uh, helpful for this board. Um, there's a, as you mentioned, there's people at different levels. I'm new to the board. I'm still learning. Uh, there's a, I have a lot of questions about the goings on, you know, discussions that happen in other committees, and it would be helpful to me to, to be part of those conversations. Um, I don't think, think that we would necessarily end up going to more meetings. Lots of people are going to one or two committee meetings a month in addition to our main board meeting. Um, and the other, just the last comment I have is that I think it would be a benefit to everyone in this town, really, because a lot of important issues are, are currently discussed in committee, um, which don't need to be discussed in private. And, and really, I think we can help answer a lot of people's questions by having those conversations in public. So I'm in favor. Good. I, I would caution that as a community of the whole, sometimes there are moments where we cannot discuss things of course. in depth because of it being a public, because it's, you know, it's privy to the Open um, Public Meetings Act. Yeah, there would always be an executive 
creative session, probably every meeting. But. Right, right. Um, and Bob has said his mic is not working. I agree with Phil on this point. So I will write that down. Thank you so much. Um, Catherine, you're next. I think we should move to a committee of the whole. I agree with everything that Steve said. I feel exactly the same way. Um, and I also think it would be a benefit to the community. I can remember being a non-board member and it's really frustrating when nothing is discussed at a board meeting because everything's happening on the committee level. Um, you really don't have much insight. There's not much transparency into what's going on and why decisions are being made. Um, so I would be pro committee of the whole. Thank you. Uh, Vince, you're next. I think it's the idea is merit. I say yes. So yes. Yes. You need to explore deeper. Okay. Vera. Um, I agree with it. If it's one meeting to two meetings, not like five meetings a month, because if it's two meetings, I think a lot of people could handle that. I'm on two I'm on two committees plus our regular meetings. So I'm already going to a bunch of meetings every month. So committee of the whole would work for me. If it was two meetings a month, I don't think it would discourage participation by um, a parent. I'm hoping, you know, for more parents on the board and they're super busy. So going from one to two meetings, I think is doable. And also I'm always emailing um, Marissa and Mr. Mersinger with questions. I don't know what's going on. I want to do my due diligence. I'm taking a lot of your time. Whereas if I was in the committee meeting, I wouldn't be taking up so much of your time in emails. So I'm in favor. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. And Cameron's not here and I actually am in favor of it as well. I think that it will, um, open up the lines of communication a little bit more, provide a little bit more transparency. However, I would caution that these meetings could be quite lengthy. Um, meetings as they are now are almost two hours long for private committees. So we could expect to have a very, very lengthy meeting, if not two, to, so to keep that in mind as we re, um, revisit this and I talk to Joe about it more in depth. So that's something to keep in mind. I mean, if we have a meeting during the week, it could very well go until 11 o'clock at night because we can barely get done our regular committee meetings on time. So can I make a quick comment? Hmm? Marissa, can I make a quick comment about that? Yeah. The problem you just said, yeah, like um, the committee meetings, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And so there would, there would have to be some structure in place where there would have to be certain time limits, turn taking that would have to be formalized. Um, agenda so things can move along. Everyone would be heard, but things would have to be moved along. And I think we could do that. For sure. But I, I would I would caution that two hours probably would not be enough to cover a full committee run through, considering one of which is policy. And those are lengthy conversations that have to be had. But yes, you're correct. There certainly should be a, a structure put in place so that the process does move as quickly as as it possibly can. And that's something that I can work with, um, with our superintendent. Um, if So what, what I'm going to do, Cameron is not here um, at this point in time, but right now we have enough to, to talk about it. So I'm going to um, discuss this. Well, did um, you get Harry's? Harry, oh. I, I haven't had it. Pete, I'm sorry, Harry. I haven't, I haven't had a chance. That's my fault. My, that's okay. My fault. I, I didn't, you know what, when your picture is not there, I miss, I was only looking for Vera because she's normally not on screen. That's my mistake. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay, Melissa. Here, I think it needs to be addressed. People are jumping to conclusions and already have started forming how it'll be done and what, you know, that's not how it should be broached. I think it needs to be studied as what are the pros and cons of committee versus I think it needs to be looked at. I think it could have a, a lot of beneficial um, aspects to it, but we can create it the way we want because there's right. nothing, you know, as a board, that's one of the, we have that ability to, to do that, to create a design that works for us now. But at the same time, we can't go against the, the, the rules, regulations that we operate under. And a lot of times, I, I keep hearing that somehow people expect that the school board meeting, which is pretty much just um, 
the format of presenting information of what's going on so no one's in the dark. It's not um, back in you know, a democracy where everybody's voice is heard and everybody has all the information and you know, it's not how we're set up. It's not how school boards are set up. And that's why you have to have executive sections. And that's why, because of things that exist like personnel and laws, legalities, that it, it, we need to explore that. But I think for a working body, I've been a proponent of that since I've been on the board that we explore it before we adopt it. It'd be like uh, very mm -hmm. foolish to do it, you know, part people with a whole. I agree. Um, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Harry. It should be exactly. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, what I'll do is um, I will discuss this further. We'll come up with some type of um, plan on how we may attempt to put this in place. And then of course, discuss it with the full board to be sure that, you know, everybody understands how it would go. So that way, if we were to go in this fashion, go in this direction, everybody understands clearly what the expectation is and how things would move forward. So I think that that's um, certainly something to, um, to definitely look into. And, and would we be, would we be doing that in executive session or in the general board meeting or during a committee meeting oh, how, committee. how in other words that well yeah i think I that's where it, it came have to, from i have to i have to discuss committee, it a bit right? more to find out exactly where this falls into place in um so that we have a better idea of how to go after it so before we do anything things in place we will be sure to make sure it's discussed in the proper forum and then made sure it's also discussed and voted on thoroughly with the entire board. We'll be sure that everybody has a say in the next steps. And it also would it also would behoove us to have input from Jesse Adams as well from the school for sure. system, because they're familiar with colors and towns and what to look for, what problems might there be. Uh, in switching. Yeah. So that's what I would also suggest as we go further along with it. I agree. I think that that's something we have to, to for sure reach out and find out everything, pros and cons of this decision or direction, and then incorporate that into our game plan. And we'll have to discuss this more. But Stephen, I think it was a great point to bring up. I think that we have uh, a good number of individuals who may be interested. And at the very least, we're going to explore it in depth and come back to the board with some type of determination or direction. So thank you so much for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mrs. Cameron, again, just one more thing about that topic. Uh, based on discussions with Susan Hodges, it certainly is legally allowable for us to do that. We have a policy that already clearly says that our board can do that. It's just a matter of, as you're saying, what steps will we take and what will the timeline be? So for example, you know, a, a, a lot of people think the year begins in January. Well, it does for some, but for a school district, it typ typically begins on July 1st. So, you know, that could be a, a possibly reasonable timeline. It just depends on, you know, what the board decides uh, makes the most sense for, for the board. So, and if the board wants to go in that direction at all, but yes, absolutely, uh, we will discuss further and I'll reach out to Jesse Adams to get some more input from him as well. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, is there any other new business? Perfect. All distributions are out. Public comment on non-agenda items, please. going to scroll through. I see Allison would like to speak. Yes. Hi, how are you? I just, I just want to make a comment, just a quick one. Um, actually, I have two comments. Just one is just about I this is I just wanted to give you my personal opinion. I understand that some people um, are a little bit confused when it comes to using a shared service like ESU. And I'm going to give you my personal opinion because um, we have gone down the avenues of utilizing other um, other resources when it came to child study. And it was not beneficial for the students of Delanco. It was 
not helpful at all. And we came to a new conclusion to utilize ESU. And I know that Joe and Lou have heard my spiel many times in the past because I work pretty closely with them, but they've been really, really great. Um, this is personally, because I this is my personal opinion because I work with them pretty closely, but the things that we are experiencing with the prior people that we were working with, we have not experienced that at all. People, um, you know, deadlines are made. Uh, students are cared for. They are their their education, their educational um, you know plan is first priority. And I just just wanted to say that because I know because <clears throat> I know that you guys are maybe having to discuss like I know that you asked about the contract and things like that. But I just wanted to give my personal opinion about ESU because we have uh, I guess for the first six years of my my career at Delanco, we were using another we were using another team and it just was not beneficial for Delanco. And I'm sure if you're on the, if you're on the board six years ago, you probably heard me complain at some point because I did complain quite a bit about them. So I just wanted to give my personal opinion about them. They've been very good. Um, and then I just, the other thing, I just wanted to just make a, just make a quick comment just about our, um, our students and our educators at Delanco. I was like writing this down as we were, as we were talking and I don't know how easy it is for everybody to come back from spring break, but it's been a, you know, it's been an interesting transition coming back. I don't, I had spring break brain, I think until maybe today, I think I was doing, I was giving kids the wrong dates for quite some time, but I just wanted to applaud all the students and educators at Delanco. I am a support staff member. So I'm obviously I'm the counselor. So I get to see every class um, each week and they are just amazing. Um, the things that are going on in school has been, I'm a Pearson, so I can't really speak to Walnut. However, I see what Walnut is doing through Twitter and through Google Classroom and just the, like, and just the amazing things that are coming out from this year. It's really, really been a positive year. I know we want to say it's kind of been an interesting year, but I feel like we have, you know, worked hard all year, the, the staff, the teachers, the educators, um, and I just wanted to applaud everybody for that. So, you know, the parents have been so flexible. The community has been so flexible. Um, yeah. So that's all. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, Mrs. Kamenugi, and just I just want to thank Ms. Donnelly as well for that comment, for both comments. And I, I do want to second what she's saying about ESU. They've done a fantastic job. Um, the question earlier was about whether we should or shouldn't delay the vote. You know, delaying it doesn't mean that it's going to be an automatic no and the relationship is discontinued. But still, I would I, I am recommending that the relationship continue simply because it's been very positive and productive. So thank you, Ms. Donnelly. And then also what you said about students and staff and, and everyone. Uh, absolutely. I agree 100 okay, percent. Wonderful. Thank you. Is there anybody yeah, just to add a little, a little something to that, just to add a little something. Also had some discussion, very preliminary, uh, with um, basically with uh, Chris Nagy, who's the superintendent at Special Services, Berlin uh, County Special Services, and BCIT, and about, and, and they also, it includes the ESU, about the possibility of in our area a need in in the area for a com complete child study team that they may be able to be able to provide that for the region so that um the, that's how the esu actually started as western burlington county services for special needs and that's basically where we've grown back to. But the idea of having, if you think about it, in terms that there was a dedicated child study team that maybe, you know, the psychologist was here two days a week in <clears throat> another district two days a week and in a third district a day a week rotating. You get the idea is to have a complete, they could even be more effective. They, they would even be, they would even be more effective because it would be a stable, child study team from them. And they, you know, he understood it. I think we all understood the value of something like that. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to um, make a public comment mm -hmm. on 
mentioned. Oh, uh, <laughs> hi. I just uh, I'm Hunter Campbell's mom, and I just want to say, give Miss Donnelly whatever she needs because she seriously is a hero to me. She <laughs> helps my son every day. Um, uh, he is on the special. He's um, high functioning autism, but he's had many issues this year with the remote learning, missing his friends. Um, just, it's been difficult for any child, but a child on the spectrum, it's a whole new ball game. <laughs> and Allison is amazing. Miss Barbara, miss her so much. <laughs> um, but we just truly appreciate the Delanco teachers, the principal, you know, it's, it's just amazing the way that they care for the kids, even from afar. So I want to second that. Miss Donnelly, whatever she wants, give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate that comment. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll read what's in the chat. Um, what is the status of the teacher's contract? It's ongoing and no further discussion can be had. Um, and Miss Deanna Bailey had mentioned Miss Donnelly is the best and we appreciate everything she does for our family. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, is there anybody else that would um, like to make a comment while we have it open? Um, All right, I just want to make, I just wanted to say thank you. That's very, very sweet that everyone is saying that. I really do love Delanco and truly, truly appreciate all the teachers I work with um, and the parents. They're amazing. And the kids love Hunter. Hunter's my guy. So, and Mrs. Campbell, I could use a new house if you want to give me something. I, I'm looking for a house right now. If you would like to purchase one for me, no, I'm just kidding. But um, I just wanted to make that, um, just that comment, that statement about the teachers and the staff, because it has not been an easy year, but, and the teachers, if you walk into a room and see them, they're teaching online and in person at the same time, they are, they're working, like they're working it. And, um, and I, and I just get to, and I get to go in for like 30 minutes at a time. So, so I just, am, you know, they're very, very, I'm very appreciative of them. And, um, you know, everyone's just doing a great job. Oh. Well, thank you so much. That that's, I can tell. I can I can hear your heartfelt. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and I and I can tell you they totally they get it. I can see. So that's awesome. Thank you. Um, also, um, Mrs. Wilson had mentioned is there an update on the five point two positions? And I understand the contract can't be discussed, but a while ago we were told there was a date scheduled. So did it happen? Um, again, cannot discuss the 5.2 positions as that's a personnel matter. And um, we did have a meeting and it is still ongoing. So that's, you know, that's all we can discuss at this time. Um, regards to that comment there. Um, is there anything further? I'm just looking to see if there's any other hands up. I don't see any other hands up at this time and no further chats. So I will close public comment on non-agenda items at this point in time. And I do believe there is a need to go into executive sessions. So um, I will, either way. I'm sorry, to discuss uh, confidential personal and legal matters at this time. So um, I hey, would- Just take just one comment. Um, I, th I think we need to discuss some things that are related, peripherally related to the chief school administrators. Okay, we can talk about it in executive session. It doesn't yes, need to be exactly. discussed. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, who would like to make a motion to go in executive session? I'll make a motion. Thank I'll you. I'll second. Thank you. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay, so it looks like we're going to go into executive session at 8.05 p.m. I expect us to be there for about an hour-ish, hour and a half. Whatever I tell you, it's gonna be later anyway. So. Uh, that is the general time frame. I'm going to say that we're expected to come back by 9.30. We'll put that down on the record and see what happens. Hope for the best. Okay, so if all the uh, school board members will now log out of this meeting and click into your executive session Zoom, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, so we have now come out of executive. We're back into our regular session and we're going to revisit the Finance Committee Report, letter G, and I need a motion to accept letter G. Motion, Whitehall. And second, please. I'll second it. Catherine has seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Darmo abstains. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. 
Um, I need a motion to adjourn this meeting. Adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Bob. And second. Thank you, Catherine. On all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One of the quickest meetings we've had in ages. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your time and your conversation. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night, all. Good night.